Hello, hockey fans of all ages, shapes, and sizes. I got a blockbuster mock trade here for you for Leafs and Sharks fans. Check it out. So, going to the Leafs, Capo Kakinen, Mario Ferraro, EK65, Kevin LeBanc. And going to the Sharks, Matt Murray, Timothy Lilligren, Jonathan Klingberg, TJ Brody, and Willie Stiles. Now, before people go berserk and insane, which I'm sure they will, it's just a mock trade, I don't care. Um, just making stuff up at this point. But um, ironically or not so ironically, the number added up for 22.25 million on the dot for both teams. How crazy is that, right? So um, just a little analysis on this potential trade. I think that um, uh, like Kakinen, um, I think he's got a lot of upside. I think um, Matt Murray didn't work out in Toronto and there's uncertainty there. Um, I wouldn't like to lose him because I think uh, he's a solid uh, number two. Um, but as we saw with Vegas, um, and just his overall character is amazing, like uh, off the ice and stuff. He's so smart. He, he's like into the chef thing and cooking good meals and stuff. Uh, very independent, uh, sharp guy. Like I said, a lot of upside there. Um, but in every trade, you have to make it um, amicable or equal on either side, right? So um, Mario Ferraro, huge locker room guy. He's um, a steady... Um, first line, second line guy. He's been to a lot of international experience. Um, and you know, huge big time shop blocker. Um, like I said, a big locker room guy who's always happy. He has been an assistant captain. Um, so he's got some leadership there, uh, with the sharks. Um, now EK 65, um, I might even do a whole separate video on him. Um, but, uh, and I probably will actually after this, but, um, uh, Kevin LeBanc. Now, I've already commented on his, um, basically his uh, uh, loyalty to a hometown discount when you're in winning mode. Now, I do think his contract, based on last couple years' performance, has been, you know, a little lagging. Um, I, I do think that uh, Willie going the other way, um, you've got uh, Carlson, who's a play driver, like he can literally go end-to-end, -end, carry it from his own end. This guy's a breakout specialist. Um, that's one of the things that I found in the playoffs that is so um, underrated is actually uh, breakouts and Florida just couldn't do it. Vegas buried them uh, in their own end and uh, they couldn't do their, you know, their get over the red line, dump it in and chase and four check. And that was their style of play, which when you got four, you know, four to six solid uh, D men, in Vegas that can all break out the puck. Now Carl is on another level when it comes to creativity and the guy can carry it. He can do like that sauce pass that he did, like he's famous for in Ottawa, which was like a, a Hail Mary. Um, and uh, you know what, while I'm on Carl, I think I'm going to just integrate it into this video. So there's a lot of talk about um, him and, oh, he's, he's injury, you know, he's always getting injured. This year was a unicorn, blah, blah, blah. Like I'm, um, in all fairness, I'm a huge San Jose Sharks fan. He's probably my favorite player and my son's favorite player too. Uh, now that Jumbo retired, um, I still love Pavs too. He's, he's amazing. Um, but, uh, yeah, like I guess with him, it, it, you could easily say, yeah, like Carl's done, you know, he's 33, he's, his career's over, but I feel like um, Bernsey was an absolute beast. Um, he's a he's a fitness freak, and he took a lot of the top minutes away from Carl. So you you like I said, you can't have two big dogs in the yard or two big horses in the stable. You got to have your number one race racehorse or workhorse. And Carl is a guy that needs minutes. Um, and like Bugner, um, you know, bless him or whatever. Like he had he had Carlson on the penalty kill. Like what are you doing? <laughs> you know, from like a pure asset management, you got 11.5 million guy on the penalty kill. Like, what do you, it just, it made no sense. So um, when they use Carlson in the right scenarios, play driving, playmaking, uh, on the power play, et cetera, 
you're going to get the best out of him, right? So you look at a lot of his seasons in the Sharks with Burnsy there. He had like 40 points. When he first came to the Sharks um, that very first year that they went on to face St. Louis Blues that kicked the crap out of them, ended up winning the Cup, it was to me it was the Sharks or the Blues that were going to win that year. And I thought they were going to do it with the Carlson trade. Now, I totally believe if the Leafs pull the trigger and do this uh, with Carl, um, and LeBanc can replace a lot of goals for. Um, he had an amazing run in that play, same playoff year as well, too, with um, with a huge comeback from Pav's injury against Vegas when they came back uh, 10 minutes left in the third, down um, 0-3, and they came back. They were up 4-3 to from that power play, the five-minute major, which is questionable. I know that um, I can be objective in that way. And even Pavs has kind of said, yeah, we kind of got away with one there with the penalty. He was injured, bleeding on the ice. It was, it was, you know, it felt fair at the time, but you know, um, that's where that rule, the replay kind of comes in. Anyhow, LeBanc had, I want to say three assists, uh, two on, uh, Couture's goals, uh, one on another, or he had three points. Maybe I think he had a goal as well too, which tied the game. So to me, Banker, um, he just he hasn't really worked out since he kind of got injured. He he broke his collarbone or his sh- uh, separated his shoulder or something. Had surgery. Um, this is why I'm um, tremendously worried about Eklund. Uh, had a similar injury, like a few feet from the boards, that danger zone where you get hit from behind. You're breaking, you know, you're breaking your neck. You're separating your shoulder. It's the one one of the most vulnerable places in hockey to be is two to three feet from the boards. And if you ever want to destroy a guy's psychology for the rest of his life, um, I had, I won't say who told me this, but um, basically they said this as a coach. It's like um, you hit a guy there who's cocky or whatever, they're, they've lost all their self-confidence. So I think there's a bit of um, mental health there. And, and Banker had a tough personal year too. So this to me is a guy, you put him with a great playmaker like a Tavares, um, and he's going to rebound. He'll score probably 30 goals. Like the guy has that capability. So, um, anyways, um, I see, uh, and, and then going back the other way to San Jose, um, Matt Murray clearly after, um, I think he was the piece for, um, uh, the Leafs as a kind of a stop gap. If they couldn't work at it with, uh, Samsonov, I think call it a bartering chip for the arbitration. Um, I was 10 K off. I said 3.65 right in the middle. Um, I guess, uh, Samsonov signed for 3.55, which is so close. Uh, they did meet in the middle, which is great. I think it's a fair thing for him. Uh, prove it, you know, have another prove it year. Um, bet, bet on yourself, et cetera. If the Leafs go and win the cup in the next, uh, like say next year, uh, they get Carlson, they win the cup. Um, you know, he probably wants 4.9 like Aiden Hill on a couple year, two, three deal, year deal, right? And you probably give it to him, right? At that point, because you got Tavares' contract um, expiring and and things like that, where you're going to free up some money before Matthew Nye's ELC runs out and he's going to demand probably like a minimum of four or five million, you know, and maybe it's a huge deal if he's a breakout superstar by then, right? Um, so Timothy Lilligren, I just kind of threw him in. Um, as a piece, like, uh, they're pretty stocked up on, um, on forwards, I want to say in Toronto, and they're pretty stocked up on D in, in, um, San Jose. So the cupboards are full. Um, and and it's like, I think at center, they've got so much center line depth. Um, and, and they've got, they brought on a guy, Dylan Gambrell, who I think is a very steady Eddie kind of like fourth line center. Um, he could even probably play third line, uh, his very first year on San Jose, he's a former Shark, um, scored a big goal in the playoffs too. So I think that was a good pick depth pickup by them. And you got Pontus. Um, you've also got um, Camp, who I think is probably their third line guy. Um, right now, uh, some of the people have Domi at center. I kind of, I think you could do this two ways, I, or this is how I would do it for the Leafs. I would say, um, assuming that Willie comes back to San Jose and they're probably going to pay him 10, he'll be the highest paid player on the Sharks. And he's a rebuilding piece because he's still pretty young. Uh, you can sign him to, you know, a, a seven, eight year deal probably. And um, yeah, it, it's great for, for both teams. Um, and where do the goals for go? You get him back with LeBanc and all the assists that Carlson got. Um, Carlson will be another Norris Um caliber defenseman, especially on the Leafs next year. Um, all these people that are kind of chirping him and saying, you know, he's going to get injured or whatever. Like, 
like I said, he was on the PK blocking shots. So foolish. Um, he broke his finger, I think, with a slap shot. Um, he, he hurt his leg from a hit, I want to say, in the St. Louis series, which, you know, when you get to the playoffs, it's all on the line, right? He's going to block shots in the playoffs. He's going to, you know, throw his body out there. The guy wants to win. And um, I can't, you know, I can't argue with that. Like, uh, and the cool thing, too, is I think Jumbo's still buddies with him. I don't know how much uh, Patty knows him, but they can kind of, uh, Toronto has a special place in everyone's heart in the league. They're the, probably the crown jewel, as I keep saying, of the league. Um, every guy would love to play for them. And especially if Carl goes there and they win the cup, um, you know, he's partially a savior. And, and obviously a lot of the core guys will get most of the credit. But, you know, this is a Toronto team that's in win now mode and they need to do something to to do that. And, um, I think, uh, with Willie, it's like, yeah, you could, um, you've got a lot of guys that you brought on like Bertuzzi and Domi and things. And if you're, if you're trying to shuffle these guys down the lineup, uh, just to keep, uh, Willie with Tavares, I think that, um, uh, some people were saying that Cali Yarncroke goes well with Marner and Matthews, which is fine. Um, let's say you have a line with Tavares, LeBanc, and Domi or Bertuzzi. Um, maybe Bertuzzi slides up instead of Yarncroke and Yarncroke goes down to the third line. But I think here's the play for the Leafs. When they make the playoffs inevitably and teams are trying to shadow um, Matthews and Tavares. So you got those guys, number one and two, there's talk about Tavares going to the left wing. So you could pull that like uh, what they do with Dreisaitl and, and McDavid in the playoffs as well. If you want to like power up, so to speak, and overload your line, overload um, in an offensive uh, zone draw, you could do that. Um, I think Keefe has a lot to learn as far as like, um, you know, pulling some of those moves. I think he's been, he's a great coach, right? He's a great guy. Um, I think some of his messaging could be more inspirational, like a Paul Maurice or things like that, like um, enjoying the moment. Um, you see these guys, they just look like beaten down dogs in the dressing room. Um, when I watched the Stanley Cup uh, review um, from the NHL Network, it was, uh, he just, uh, some of the messaging is off, but I think he's a great coach and I think he's going to mature this year. And if he starts pulling some crafty moves, and juggling lines at the right times to outcoach his opponent, his opponents. I think the Leafs make that next step. They make the final for sure with Carlson. No doubt in my mind they get there um, if they pull this blockbuster trade off. Um, and uh, so what I was going to say about the third line is um, I look at uh, the Tampa, the Goodrow line, etc. Um, I think they could do something like Domi, Bertuzzi, and LeBanc potentially in the playoffs as a third line and then because you're going to have guys not given um, Matthews as much space not given um, uh, Tavares as much space right and obviously um, with Willie going that Willie and Tavares connection was so great and a lot of their points are joined at the hip right so um, I think a guy like LeBanc or Batuzzi or uh, like a Domi up on and like you bring these guys in um, pump up their numbers, right? They're here for one year. If they play themselves out of a contract because they become too rich, maybe you win the Stanley Cup out of it, right? And maybe after that, they, you know, they get paid or they take a discount, right? Who knows what people are going to do. My other video is kind of saying like, line up all the guys on a two uh, against um, Marner and Tavares's renewal. And if they're like holding you ransom as the Leafs, like for contracts, like if Matthews and Nylander, um, I don't know what's going on, right? Uh, I'm not there to witness it. I fly on the wall or whatever. But if these guys are holding you ransom, then just put pit them all against each other. Then you can say, well, you know, it's he said, she said. Um, after the two years, you get two years to just go all in. And I think teams have to make this decision now in a hard cap era. You have to decide, okay, we're all in. Our window's open. Like New Jersey's going to be one of those teams. I, I see Carolina as one of those teams. Um, Pittsburgh is one of those teams too that, and I don't even think Pittsburgh, um, they didn't even make the playoffs last year. Right. So it's like, they'd have to do an awful lot to, to be back in competitive again. I think, like I said, I believe they're a couple years behind the sharks in their rebuild. Um, they've already won a couple cups though, so they probably don't care. Right. But if they want to keep that core together, um, it's like, you kind of miss your window. You got to recoup assets. And I think the Sharks, um, uh, Greer made the toughest trade uh, for the team in his tenure so far. 
uh, in trading Timo. He was a beloved guy, like big body, um, huge in the playoffs normally, except he got smoked by Truba last year. That guy is an animal with uh, open ice hits like uh, Scott Stevens was. Um, uh, Timo Meyer is usually like a huge four checker, big bodies in there, digging pucks out of the corners. And he was awesome in all those playoff uh, times. And so was Evander Kane too, right? Um, those kind of guys are irreplaceable in the playoffs, right? And I think a Bertuzzi and a Domi are guys like that. They're the retrieval uh, pit bulls that'll go into the corner and uh, they're coming out with a puck no matter what. They're, nobody's beating them out of that corner. So um, just to show... Uh, uh, so the Matt Murray thing, um, who's going back to the Sharks? Matt Murray, Lilligren, Klingberg, uh, and Brody, and uh, Willie Stiles. So you know what? It, let's just say um, the Leafs are set on on not trading um, three defensemen, right? So um, they could say to um, San Jose, um, in place of that, you know, we're five million difference if it's Brody. It, that they want to keep, um, then maybe the Sharks retain five mil, which is, I think, insane. Um, they retain five mil out of that deal um, for four years. Just seems to be, like, so brutal. I, I mean, I'm, I think Greer's, like, that's almost that 50-50 thing, which is, like, you know, maybe if they have to get that deal done um, and it's not Brody coming the other way, like, if the Leafs just say, oh, well, we need him. Um, but I, I think you you make the Leafs retain a million on Brody or, you know, like, so this Klingberg thing, it's like, I hear a lot of fans saying, well, no way it's going to happen because they traded for Klingberg. Well, they don't have Carlson, right? So Klingberg is technically not even a Leaf yet. He hasn't played a game there. So what's the big deal? If Klingberg comes back the other way, the Sharks have like a number one power play guy in place of Carlson. And then, like I said, Carl's a workhorse. He's going to want 20 plus minutes a night. Um, and, and, um, I just want to put this plus minus thing to bed. And I, I do believe like, please NHL make a Bobby Orr trophy, um, before he, he's, uh, posthumously remembered for a trophy, like while he's still alive, please make a Bobby Orr trophy and, and honor some of the other guys of the game too, like a, a Gordy Howe trophy for like a tough guy of the league or something like that. But, um, you know, I'll always remember this. Uh, one of the funniest um, things I've ever seen, it was LA playing Ottawa. And I believe it was Brown and Doughty or another guy. Um, and they're like, they're like, who's got Carl? You got Carl. No, I don't want him. You take him. And then Carl's just laughing his ass off because no one wants him in overtime. So uh, this, this plus minus thing, um, the Sharks had 16 I believe 16 overtime losses and I don't know how many what percentage Carl was on the ice so like he was on guaranteed every single one of those overtimes so let's say 10 goals that's minus 10 right there because he's on the three on three format and the Sharks lost an enormous I think that's why they ended up with the fourth overall pick is just they lost so many games so many close games that were devastating and I think a lot of people underestimate the the rebuild um, of the Sharks of how it could go. Um, so, yeah, like, um, and 